you got to know what's on the inside. The exterior does not make up for a terrible interior. Now, women, switching gears here, let's pick on... Ladies, I know you liked all that stuff I was just saying. I'm sure I just validated you a bunch, but now it's your time to get criticized. We'll flip the script, literally on the other side. Women see a suitcase, and they can look at a suitcase that isn't all that good looking. I mean, some women are wild for the ravishing looks, and they generally have crappy relationships because they're acting more like a man jumping in bed. You know, the more feminist a woman is, the less feeling negative she has about a high body count or having a child out of wedlock or having an abortion. So the more left-wing a woman is, the more she is willing to behave like a man traditionally, you know, to slum around, to be, to be a hoe. The more conservative a woman is, the more right-wing, the more Christian a woman is, the more she has shame and restrictions, reservations about sharing her body, as she should, because it's a, it's a sacred thing. If you don't, you, I'm looking at you, if you don't treat it sacred, why should he? You tell me. You want a guy to cherish you? If you don't cherish you, he ain't going to cherish you. Why should he? If you treat your heart and soul and your body like the temple that God asked you to, and you don't allow anyone who doesn't treat it that way to have it, there's a really good chance that you will manage to filter out all the turds that are breaking your heart, and you'll get to have that relationship you've always pined for. Today's world is getting really fixated with open relationships. Polyamory, ethical non-monogamy. These are all just new ways to say I want to be a slut without anyone being able to call me that. Feminism should liberate women really by oppressing them. Marriage oppresses women. Taking a man's last name oppresses women. It's the exact opposite. It protects them. It gives them a collar, a leash to put on a man so that he doesn't run out and leave her. She has the ability to say, go ahead and do me wrong. I can take half your freaking assets. I can take your house. You'll be making payments to me, child support, alimony, and I'll get the kids. This is marriage is a protection for a woman, not an oppression. To feel like you're free to go behave in a way that screws up your option to ever secure a good husband. That is not liberation. That is self-destruction. Honey, listen to me. I know you have cravings. I know you have urges. You're 40-something years old. You still haven't found that soulmate that Disney promised you back when you were six. That man that was going to run through the briars and climb the tower and, and save you. If you were pure and couldn't find him... You know, if you respected yourself and, and maintained characteristics that would be desirable to that prince, if you did that for all those years and he didn't find you, what makes you think that getting tattoos up to your chin and all over your face and sleeping with 25, 30, 40 different guys, what makes you think that is going to get Prince Charming to come for you? It's not. This liberation so that you can go slum around and experience all these bad boy men who have masculine dominant traits that you surrender to in your passion. They are not stick around guys. You're trading stability, forever stability, for short term experience. That one time pleasure, you're thinking to yourself, God, I've had that itch. I've been fiddling my skittle for so long to this, you know, passionate fantasy. And when I see him in a crowd, I can pick him out and I just want to go live out my fantasy with him. That one time, that one time deal, that sweaty hot, you know, you, you go grease the sheets and sleep in a wet spot together. That is not going to hug you when you are puking your brains out from chemotherapy. That is not going to hold you when one of your children dies in a drunk driving accident. That's not going to hold you when your grandbaby has a, a lymphoma. It needs to go to St. Jude's. You want someone that is going to be there for you and be reliable. Ethical non-monogamy is not the answer to that. It is the destruction of that hope that you've been holding out for. It will eliminate that as a future for you. Having someone to lean on and age with and, and die with. Someone to be there with you. Your person. 